hopefully this works. Um, if I did this right, we'll be live not just on Twitch but on YouTube as well. Because now Twitch is allowed multi-cast, so simulcasting, multi-streaming. Um, yes. Okay, so this should work. Um, so hello everyone. Um, the thing is, oh wait, actually no, I can do it this way. I was gonna say, I can't look at multiple chats, but I actually kind of can. Wait, hang on. I just need to pop these out. Um, but yes, hello, hello everyone. Um, we are going to be playing Baldur's Gate 3, but I did want to do a live discussion video. For those of you who don't know, we've been doing um, Baldur's Gate 3 discussion videos as well as um, streaming the game and doing whatever um so i figured why not also do one that i can always like highlight it and uh break it down later so that's exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna do basically a video but it's live and then i'll just you know have to edit it later not edit it really but just like highlight it i don't i don't edit <laughs> um but i think this this subject is gonna be interesting also spoiler alert because we're gonna we're gonna be talking spoilers uh of course i mean i can't filter myself so be warned anyway so the subject Blackith. Let's talk about Blackith. Okay, this. We're gonna pretend like. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna pretend that this is a video. Okay, so. Here we go. <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's Ruby here. Bring you guys a another video. Today, we're gonna be discussing the truth about Vlacketh. Yes, that that is the thing, right? Because there's actually kind of something that is very interesting about Vlacketh. And it's actually pretty obvious that she's not a god, that she's not this otherworldly person that she kind of claims to be. In fact, there's actually kind of a secret within the words that she uses to showcase her powers. And this has to do with um, there being D&D. &D. D and d this is a D&D &D game, right? Dungeons and Dragons, it's tabletop. There are rules for tabletop about tabletop there are rules right there's there's rule sets game lore and so on and so Baldur's gate 3 for those of you who don't know or somehow don't know is based on that lore within the dungeon and dragons uh handbook in fact Baldur's gate is actually a location in D, &D. like it's not just made up out of nowhere it is actually an actual location in the lore of D and D, so are the Githy Yankee and everything else. Like this is not really a surprise. These do actually exist in D and D, and mind flares and everything else. The thing that is interesting, though, is there. So basically, with with Baldur's Gate three, you can only get to a certain level in the game. And the reason why this is, is because the level afterwards, 
gets very chaotic, very crazy. There's not too many campaigns that go past that level, which is which is past level twelve, I believe. Yeah, past level twelve, it gets crazy, basically. Um, so generally speaking, there are not too many campaigns that go beyond that. Although there can be some if your dean, if, if your dungeon master is so kind <laughs> to to allow you to have that chaos. Uh, or if you've just been doing it a, a while, maybe you have gone past uh, level 12 with your character. Sometimes it just happens like that. But the thing is, with there, it's not in the game. The Because there is so much complex... Um, it's such a complexity once you get past level 12. And one of that complex complexity, I don't even know what I'm I'm saying. One of those aspects is this thing called the wish spell. Now the wish spell is basically you have the ability to wish for anything in the game. Now most dungeon masters will have rules to protect it being too outlandish but at the same time you can wish for anything for example you could say i i wish for a million dollars and you would actually be able to get a million dollars okay so it's kind of like that and the thing is it's not able to be in Baldur's gate 3 because there are so many possibilities of how you could use the wish spell that it would be impossible to predict every single outcome. Because you could maybe wish for an item, you could wish to end the game, you could like wish for like so many different things, like it is impossible to know what people would choose. However, that doesn't mean it's not in the game. If you take a very close look at Vlacketh and the words that she says, if you piss her off, she will say, I wish for you to die or something along the li those lines. That means that Vlacketh has now triggered the wish spell. That is why you will die instantly if you do that. Because she wished for it and it happened. This actually means that Vlacketh is just a really high leveled character. Yes, she is an adventurer. She is whoever. And she is just really high leveled. She's probably level 13. <laughs> um, and s I guess because the other Githyanki are lower leveled, that she um, acts like a god for them. Or maybe she became such a high level character a while ago to the point where it became a legend. I mean, look at Tav. Tav is basically a living legend herself now or himself now like they have already become kind of that being and I mean you could have Tav kind of ascend as well what's interesting about Vlacketh is that she doesn't really actually have any proof that she is a god or a deity like, if you look at Shar, if you look at Saluna, you pray to them. They, they make things happen. They It doesn't even, like, they don't even have to be there. They don't have to know anything. They just kind of do this. Now, the question really is, though, how does Vlacketh even appear the way that she does? Now, I do have thoughts Especially with the eyes, right? I feel like Vlacketh 
isn't even really there. I feel like she is more of an astral projection. And I feel like she's just using a spell that lets her project herself in the manner that she does. Like, has she ever really touched anyone in that form? I feel like she's doing, like, the Wizard of Oz thing. I mean, you know, you guys have seen the Wizard of Oz, right? The the man behind the curtain. I feel like it, it's kind of like that. Um, I feel like there's, a, like, a, a person behind the, cu- the curtain, and she is uh, acting like Black of, or acting l- like a god. Like... And why does she know about the artifact is the question. Why does she know that somebody is in there? And again, I think this actually can be solved by saying that she is just a high-level and like character. Like there are so many abilities that unlock in level 13 and up that um, it's not actually far-fetched to say that maybe the truth is just that <laughs> uh, like maybe the truth is just that she just is high level like she you could argue that maybe black is just roll, just rolled for, for insight and investigation and why does black is like like because black is doesn't even know if you actually even kill the mind flare she just assumes that you have or haven't and she doesn't even care if you do or don't she will kill you anyways so that's not even proof that that she is all-knowing because she doesn't know she doesn't know who the dream visitor is or how to kill them i think she just knows that they're there (laughs) so so (laughs) So the reason why she can't do it herself is because she's not a god. If a god, if she was a god, she would be able to be everywhere all at once, right? But she's not. She's not. She's not tied down to anyone. So she's not. She's not like um, like a fiend. She just really is just a, a high level character, and it's it's so funny. It's not, it's not really a, I guess it's not really a discussion, it's more of a sort of theory? I mean, not really, because it's not really even a theory. We know this in-game, it's like, they t- they explain it in-game, that she is just, she's just faking it. <laughs> she's a fraud. I mean, we know that Flacketh is a fraud. And how did it get to this point? Well, I think it kind of has to do... With the fact that the Githyanki are very indoctrinated and sheltered people. They don't really react, interact with other people. Other people don't really know what they are or have even met any. They're very violent people. And it seems like a lot of this reasoning is because of Vlacketh. I mean, yes, like, Voss is also kind of violent, and so is Orpheus. I mean, I feel like they they have this, like, violent instinct, but I think it's because they have all been taught to survive. Like, if you, if you talk to, like, Lazelle and everything about what it is that the Githyank, like, talk, talk to her about their culture and everything... It seems that they're very nomadic people. They don't really settle down. Like, even if they have a crush, right? They don't really necessarily stay within that crush. So, they are people that travel a lot. And they probably tell stories a lot, too. And I feel like the the story is that Vlacketh probably came up with a legend herself. To, to demonstrate just how powerful and how unworldly she is, except she's not. She's just, she's just very experienced. She's just very powerful. No one's been able to stop her. And, you know, I think that's just it. Like, 
I don't think there's too much to Vlacketh that is even a mystery once you've completed the game. Because we know that Vlacketh is a fraud. Like, it is not a mystery. The mystery really is, why did the Githyanki believe her? And why don't they know about Orpheus? Because it seems like a lot of the people forgot that Orpheus was even a thing. Well, I think the answer really is, Vlacketh has been around for so long and Orpheus has been missing for so long that the people that grew up, like the adult Githyanki, only know about Vlacketh. Vlacketh probably didn't tell them about Orpheus and therefore they had no way to know about Orpheus. The only people who would really know about Orpheus is the, the elders or like the, the old Githyanki. And if you look around, I feel like there's not too many old Githyanki. I, think, I mean, to be fair, we only went to one crash, so I don't, I don't really know for certain. But it also seems like, you know, the, the Githyanki and the Mind Flayers have gone at it for a while, which they have. I mean, we the Geth, uh, Lazel ta talks about how um, you know it, this this rivalry has been going on for so long. They're literally taught what to do when a mind flare um, takes over them, like when they get pad pulled. So this isn't really a new thing for them. They know this, and um, it does kind of question, leave you to question, what exactly is Vlacka's motive even in this? Like, what is her, what is her goal? Why does she want the artifact back? And I think the thing is, it's exactly how they say it is, she just wants to destroy Orpheus to make sure that she, her her truth never gets revealed. And the truth is that she has never been a god. And I think that's just it. I mean, that pretty much is just explained in the game. So it's not even really a question. It's more just so um, a, neat, a neat idea. Because I think it really demonstrates the types of characters that you can find. Like, like because there are gods in D&D. &D, but Vlacketh is not one of them. <laughs> um, I don't actually know if Vlacketh has, like, is is a character in D&D. &D. I, don't, I don't know. Sometimes they are. Um, let's see. Vlacketh, the Lich Queen... The Undying Queen. Actually, she actually is in D&D. I don't... Let's see. Yeah, I mean, she's... Yeah, she just is a high-level character. Uh, she's the last queen, and she ascended... Now, to be fair, I don't know. This is just for the Forgotten Realms wiki, which is the, the lore. Yeah, I mean, I mean, sh I think the thing is, to a low-leveled character, any character that is higher than them would seem godly because they're doing abilities that they've never learned before. And if no one has ever been able to defeat Vlacketh, which no one has, then no one can really do anything about it. And to them, she has proven 
her sort of godhood. I mean, I guess, in a way, Vlacketh is kind of the Baldur's Gate version of Talos. You guys know Talos, right? From Skyrim? The sort of false god... Well, not necessarily false. I mean, I think both of them actually had kind of similar things in common. The fact that they are just kind of like really experienced people who grew to be that powerful. 